new videos every day. Hi, I'm Dr. Vince Balanzi, and I want to talk to you a little bit about diabetes. I've spoken to you before about ways that you can create function in the body, about the fact that you have options. So I want to get a little more specific about what I mean with that. If we talk about diabetes, most diabetes these days, the, the great majority of diabetics are type 2 diabetics. That means that they've created diabetes by themselves for the most part. Type 2 diabetes, they used to call it adult onset. Now we see it in kids. The truth is that it's a lifestyle disease. It comes about not necessarily because of genetics. Genetics play their part, but only a small part, perhaps as little as 25% of the picture. The rest is how you've treated your body. It usually comes down to the amounts of refined sugars, the high loading of the body of, of different types of sugar, and creating a, a situation where the body just cannot control anymore. If you look at somebody's body operating perfectly, what we'll see is that a meal is taken, the blood sugar rises just a bit, and just the right amount of insulin is put out to bring the blood sugar down into a certain window or a certain concentration. If that's happening, you can almost keep your blood sugar from being a, an up and down type situation to just being more of a flat line. Think of a graph where the blood sugar is regulated hour after hour without any alarm and staying well within where it's designed to stay. Because let's face it, sugar is toxic. It really is. If you let sugar get out of control, it's going to cause damage. Think of how serious diabetes can be. If you don't know, you should check it out. It is a very serious disease. The end stages of diabetes are extreme aging in a sense because you cause lack of circulation, you cause joint pain, you cause a lot of different symptoms. And it's simply the fact that the sugar that's been unregulated has been allowed to, we call it a glycation reaction, but almost become a crust on certain things in the body. The proteins that your body uses, the hormones, even your red blood cells. One of the more common tests for diabetes is called a hemoglobin A1C. It's literally a test of how much sugar is attached to the red blood cell. What happens when the red blood cell has sugar attached to it? It can't carry oxygen as well. So that's one of the reasons that we have the problems with the effects of diabetes. If your body doesn't regulate blood sugar, then you're going to have physical problems. Hormones don't work as well. I told you the red blood cells don't work as well. Proteins are altered in their structure and their function. You, you even become, in a sense, crusted inside. In fact, there's something that scientists talk about called advanced glycation end products. And what it is, is the sugared proteins and other chemicals in your body that are, in a sense, inactivated by the bonding of sugar. So sugar is a fuel for you. It's not necessarily essential to life because you can manufacture for, in, in other ways the sugars for your body. But you need a certain amount of fuel for performance, especially athletically, but also for your mind to function. So it's not that I don't want you to have any sugar at all, but I sure don't want you to eat sugar that has a high glycemic index, meaning that it gets into the body very quickly and raises the blood sugar much higher than it would have been raised if you'd been eating products that didn't raise the blood sugar as, as fast as, as the high glycemic products did. So if you're eating foods closer to their origin, I tell people in my classes to eat a glycemic index of 55 or below. Go look that up. If you keep the glycemic index of each food at 55 or below, you're forced to eat better food. It's going to be much easier on your body. You're not going to create this whole thing that we call metabolic syndrome, where triglycerides are high and you've got abdominal ob obesity and all of these health problems beginning. Metabolic syndrome is one of the most, most common things going around these days. And it's not a disease. What it is, is the signs that people have abused themselves. Abuse themselves with sugar. So if we're going to talk about type 2 diabetes, we're talking about a disease that's created by people's lifestyle. And it's totally controllable. In the office, we work with a number of diabetics who have, in a sense, become non-diabetic. Now, by medical classification, once you've been a diabetic, you're always a diabetic. But I've seen people go from completely dysregulated blood sugar levels to being able to control it completely by lifestyle, even people that were on medication. You have that option. You can take control. So be real careful with the amount of sugar you eat. Again, we want to talk about eating foods that are more natural. And what I mean by that is a food that's closer to its origin. If you're going to eat a food close to its origin, it's the way it comes off the field. The foods that are whole and together 
have fiber, they have sugars in them that are not so dangerous to the body. Sucrose is not a natural sugar. It's a concentrated processed sugar. The high fructose corn syrup is not a naturally occurring fruit sugar. It's a processed corn starch at this point. It's not good for you. It's going to create diabetes. So if you want to avoid diabetes, you have to take care of yourself. You have to learn that you have options. You don't necessarily have to be controlled by a physician. You can take care of yourself. And the way that you do that is by making the right choices in what you eat and by being active enough so that blood sugar doesn't build up. It's as simple as that. Now, for some people, that's a lot of effort, but that's what it takes. So you have an option. You can either take care of yourself by eating right and exercising, or you can have a doctor manage you by using very strong pharmaceutical drugs. Interestingly, there are natural substances that work almost as well. There was a recent study where cinnamon was used and so were several other anti-diabetic drugs. And the cinnamon performed as well or better. So there are things that help you regulate your blood sugar. Not that you have to go out and eat a lot of cinnamon. But if you're eating foods that don't cause the blood sugar to go much higher up where, than where it should, and you put out insulin at a reasonable rate, you won't have diabetes. The problem is you keep eating that higher and higher sugar. The body has to respond stronger and stronger. And there reaches a point where you can't put out enough insulin and the receptors to the insulin, you're not sensitive to it anyway. That's why we call it insulin insensitivity. And you're suddenly diabetic because you can't regulate blood sugar. So again, you have an option. You have several options. You can choose to take care of yourself or you can choose to be taken care of by someone else. I prefer to take care of myself and I prefer the same for you because it's much better on your body. There are no side effects. You're taking care of yourself. You're going to be healthier. You're going to be happier. And that's what I wish for all of you. So again, this is Dr. Vince Balanzi. Uh, if you have any questions, you can go to my website. It's bewellrx.com. If you are struggling with diabetes, go see a clinical nutritionist. Go see somebody who knows how to get you to a diet and an exercise routine that are going to be helpful. There are a lot of professionals that know that. Unfortunately, some medical doctors either don't give you that information or, or perhaps aren't aware of it themselves. But it's not about finding out what drug to take. It's about finding out how your body works and how to work with it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.